It's rare when you meet somebody who knew exactly what they wanted to do with their life when they were in fifth grade. So imagine my surprise when I met John Ballman, who was doing exactly what he told his fifth grade teacher on career day. John's the owner and founder of Ballman Earthworks, and he talks about things like finding uh, workers and managing equipment fleets on other contractor site report videos in this series. This is John's uncommon story about his remarkably long commitment to the Earthworks business that he loves. Feels good when I'm living on the edge. Watch me now. Hi, Larry Stewart here with FordConstructionPros.com. I'm in Washington, Missouri on a project site with John Ballman, who is the, the head of Ballman Earthworks. You knew you were gonna get be in this business a long ways back. All the way back to the fifth grade. We had sort of a career explorations day and, and we were bringing in guest speakers. The teacher wanted us to write down what we wanted to be when we were gonna grow up and some goals that we had. For me, I wanted to be a a grading contractor, an excavation contractor, a surveyor, or licensed surveyor, a civil engineer, and make $40,000 a year when I graduated college. I can walk you back to uh, St. Vincent's in Dutso, Missouri, in the classroom that we sat in. How did you know about about earth moving and, 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 and surveying and all those sort of things? We had some rental property and owned some older equipment. My uncle worked for a, more of a basement digging contractor, so I was around equipment growing up, but never my own. If I can make this reality, this is what I want to do. So it was really the equipment that, that The got equipment you. suckered me in. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure, the, the desire for the equipment. So, you know, I needed to, to know that I accomplished something today. So you look, you know, this project here, we're taking it from a flat pad up the hill here, we're starting to build building pads, you know, and shape the parking lot. At the end of the day, you can tell you did something. I mean, this is huge. You, how many uh, cubic feet are you moving here? 20,000 plus cubic yards. So yeah, more than 2,000 dump truck loads came in here. We're probably sitting at about 14 feet of fill current. That's amazing. One of three import sites that we're operating currently around the St. Louis region. So you went from grade school on this path and, and by the end of high school, you were buying equipment. Purchased my first skid loader in 2001 and odd jobs on the weekend, you know, for friends and family. And it, it's just one machine at a time blossomed into a much bigger unit. So you were already getting some, some experience in running a business. At a very small scale. At a very small <laughs> scale. Did you do some work for uh, some contractors? In between, I worked as a laborer and a carpenter for a small construction company, and he had a skid loader. So I learned a lot just by watching others. My first job out of college, I learned a lot of the business aspect. Learned much more in the field, and I still have a lot to learn on that. I mean, it's, it's a learning experience every day. Taxes and depreciation and how, how you're expensing it, whether to rent or buy. And Is it like what you expected in fifth grade? Some days, some days. <laughs> uh, like what kind the, of days? Uh, like today, it's sun shining, production's good. There's very little mud on the street. On the flip side, we have Rain moving in, it's muddy. Now we have to figure out how to clean the street. Now an employee just got a sick kid. Now he's got to leave early. It's just all important stuff of life. Sure. And you don't think about that early on. A lot of logistics. Yeah, yeah. And the people, they, you, you know, when you're in fifth grade, you don't don't think of how, how complex that whole uh, project becomes when you start throwing a whole bunch of personalities. That's right. I've learned uh, a lot about employees' personalities. I probably know a lot about them that they don't know about themselves. They could probably say the same about me. You know, they, they know how I, how I operate, but I know what makes them happy and what doesn't, you know? Whether it's the location they're working, the, whether they're on rock or dirt or who they're working with, what subcontractor and yeah. what start time in the morning or what the finish time is in the evening. Very interesting. Some people are happy with 32 hours a week. Some people are happy with 60. Some people are happy with 40 hours a week and only 40 hours. And some people want 60 after a 20 hour week, but only want 30 the next. It's a real challenge on that. You seem to be the, like the kind of guy that, that, that keeps those things in mind when you're making I decisions. do a lot. I mean, yeah. my employees are my friends. And, and so that's what's really hard. I, we had an analyst in and, and I think he gave me the title of a great general manager. I'm a horrible CEO. The bottom line isn't everything. Right, right. You know? And you're, you're also in a pretty small organization. That's you right. You may not need a general manager right. and a CEO. We're getting to the point where it would be helpful, you know, if we could divide and conquer a certain group of guys and another, because it gets tough. We're we're working on such small job sites, you know, three to five acres, and they're not not that small, not to discount ourselves here, but 
when we're on six or seven of those every day, to manage that is becomes a challenge because sure. they're not near one another. Right. Uh, you know, we're anywhere from 15 minutes to um, an hour between job sites. Flipping manpower around, visiting the job sites, getting materials delivered, sharing trucks. This site, we have trucks coming in and out. You know, they're going to finish the day here, but often we need trucks for a half day on this job and a half day on another. We can share them easier when they're closer. However, here, not the case because we don't have another truck job closed, but just balancing all of that. Logistics. Logistics. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a juggling act. Yeah. What was your fifth grade teacher's name? Mrs. Roaring, Lois Roaring. Is Mrs. So, Roaring around? Have you had a uh, So she was a, she's a neighbor to my parents. And yes, okay. she is. She's retired now. Uh, but but has she seen your... your the, oh, she is. Yes, we your... work for their family farm as well. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. All right. So a family member of hers works for us now as oh, well. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, no, it, it's, it's come full circle. Everybody's involved. My dad ran for parts last night. You oh, know, wow. So, <laughs> to make sure this morning was went off without a hit. So. Yeah. If you were sitting down and, and writing about the next uh, 20 years, what would you, what, what, what um, would your goals A lot be? will be driven off the kids at home. You yeah. know, if there is a strong interest here, I'm all in. If not, you know, we may, we may relax a bit. You know, and I hate to say that, but I'll do anything for my kids and family. And the goal to get to where we are is probably what the picture was 20 years ago. Sure. You know, sort of have at least one of every machine, and now we have three or four, if not seven, of, you know, the bread and butter machines, whether it's an excavator, skid loader, scraper, tractor, dozer. You know. So now that we're there, I don't have a desire, you know, if we have seven, seven dozers, I don't really have a desire for 14. So the push isn't as strong. Yeah. There's a long time yet, mm -hmm. but they're very interested in the business now at a young age. So who knows where that takes us. But so you got twins there. Huh? That's right. Oh, twin right. girls. All right. Yeah, and they were born in 2014. Oh, man. Yeah. So they're <laughs> they're active. All of our kids are very active and, sure. and healthy. And thank God, you know, we're all here. Okay. So they enjoy the equipment as well. They'll come and ride and check job sites and Great. get a phone call every morning. Dad, where are you? And what, what equipment are you working on? Show us the equipment. Yeah. Show me what you're doing <laughs> yeah. today. That's right. great. That's fantastic. Well, that, you know, thanks a lot for that. I really appreciate your time. Yeah.